Welcome to the We Are VIP podcast. Each week, your host, Casey Haston, Director of Recruiting at VIP, will bring you valuable insights from thought leaders, introduce you to incredible companies, and bring you tips for landing your dream job from our team of executive recruiters at VIP. And now, Casey Haston. Welcome to the We Are VIP podcast, a podcast devoted to adding value to your career or candidate search, brought to you by VIP. I'm your host, Casey Haston. I'm an executive recruiter, director of recruiting with VIP, and your all-around hiring guru. And it is my absolute passion and desire to help you find the career and, and the job that you're passionate about and that you love so that you never have to work a day in your life. And I do that by bringing you experts and thought leaders and influencers and you know people that can help you to find that next right step in your career. And so today I'm super excited to bring you Dr. Greg Persley, CEO of PC Medical Centers and author of Fix Your BS Belief Systems. Come on, people. Dr. G is on a mission to supercharge success through a mat through the magic of belief systems. And you know me, I love brain hacks, people. As the brains behind the transformative Fix Your BS Academy and the author of the bestseller Fix Your BS, he's an expert in fast tracking goals. And this is the time of year that we need to be setting our goals and fast tracking those goals. So thanks for joining us today, Dr. Greg. Absolutely, Casey. Thanks for having me. And I believe you go by Dr. G is how you're most lovingly known, correct? Yeah, most of my uh, students and people in my groups know me as Dr. G. It's a little easier to remember. Well, <laughs> well, actually, Greg is my son's name, so that's pretty easy for me. Did I not tell you that before? Easy for you, that's right. right no, so are you, a, I don't, I, you didn't tell me that. Are you a Gregory or a Greg? Uh, I, well, I go by Greg, but yeah, it's uh, 1G. I'm the, I'm the Greg with one G. Everybody oh. always asks that as well. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. I, my in-laws gave me such grief when I named my son Gregory and we called him Greg. And they're like, if you're going to call him Greg, why didn't you just name him Greg? And I'm like, I don't know. I wanted him to have a strong name. I don't know. So I'm always curious about that. So I love to talk about, because I think one of the most important aspects of finding a job, managing a career you know, growing just in general is through networking. So I always like to start our conversation with how did we get connected? Yeah, um, well, networking is extremely important. Uh, not knowing, the first part of that though is knowing what you want. That's mm. that's where people, so I've seen a lot of people go out and try to network and, and they don't know what they actually want. So they just end up in making a bunch of connections that don't really fit the direction they're headed. So first thing is know what you want. But we got connected through uh, that one podcast. It's a group of, uh, of guys that I met through networking on my own, and um, they connected us. I love that. Shout out to Todd Armstrong, who runs the podcast arm for C-Rock Mike Sirocco. Shout out to him too. Amazing, amazing individual. I actually had him speak at a networking event here last year, and it was just powerful. That's a powerful, powerful group. So I'm so glad that you got connected to them and they connected you to me. So, but tell me a little bit about yourself and what brought you to where you are today? Well, I mean, I can go as far back as when I was 23 years old, I graduated as a chiropractor and wanted to be a millionaire by the time I was 30 and had the same, you know, entrepreneur goals of I'm going to take over the world um, when you're young and, uh, you know, full of vigor and just like, I can do anything. Um, that's when I thought I knew something. Uh, that's for sure. Uh, my wife and I, we had been married uh, just over a year and we had a few month old daughter and I went and moved and, and started a practice. A few years into practice, we had our second child. He had a lot of, um, he ended up with a lot of medical complications, unfortunately. And it took our focus from growing and, and retirement and money and expansion to keep him alive, keep the family together. And so over a decade period, um, we really had to, you know, come together as a unit, as a group, as a family to, to stay together. Uh, when he started to get better, in 2018, um, I had to reinvent 
uh, myself and what our family unit was. And so in going through that process, that's where fix your BS or belief systems comes from, <laughs> is I had to change my belief about what the meaning of all this was and who I was and what I was capable of. Because like I said, I wanted to be a multimillionaire by the time I was 30. Well, then I was late 30s and I was in more debt and was not, not even close to becoming a multimillionaire. So I had to alter or change the belief about what that meant Otherwise, it would have just kept tearing me down. You know, and I think that's so important what you're saying right now. I have been obsessed with NLP lately. I yeah. just, you know, and now this is probably the most dangerous thing. I'm reading a book about it. <laughs> so, you know, um, instead of going through a that's coach great. or something like that. But, you know, mindset is... That's, that's great. It, it, it is so true because you could have looked just with your mind. You could have created two different realities, multiple different realities. Could have been the, oh, poor me, why did this happen to me? And then everything was bad and never could get better. But instead, you shifted that mindset to a belief of, this is what happened. This is how I can make it better. I'm not the victim. Yeah. When you're a victim of any scenario, <laughs> then you have no control of your emotions. You have no control of your, your thoughts, your actions. You're just the victim. So you're controlled by the external environment. When you take responsibility and say, I'm going to control my own emotions, my own thoughts, my own actions, then you become um, more, uh, having that responsibility, you become more in control of you know, yourself. And then the external starts to change because of that. So that, that's just where I was at that time in my life of trying to figure out what it all meant and um, having to redefine myself because a belief is nothing more than a repeated thought that your subconscious mind attaches to. So if you repeat something enough times uh, and you do it with enough emotion, it just becomes who you are. Mm -hmm. And so when you start doing it, it can even be something you don't believe, but if you do it a long enough, you will start to believe it. So one of the things I have to, that I do with my um, coaching students or, or the groups that I have um, is I just have them you know, look in the mirror. How many? How long has it been since you looked at yourself in the eyes in the mirror and just tell yourself that it's okay? Or, you know, I love myself and the mistakes don't make me. They definitely don't break me. They lift me up. So the mistakes are just things that, didn't go the way I had planned. And I've made business mistakes, financial mistakes. Um, you know, we've all told little white lies thinking it wouldn't be a big deal. Uh, I've been, I've been in pretty much any scenario that you can, you can imagine. And, uh, it, it all matters on, on how you view that situation. And instead of being reactive to it, you just need to take responsibility for it. And that's the things you can control. You know, I love what you just said so much, especially about looking in the mirror, because I just recently read, not recently, it's probably been about, whenever it came out, read Mel Robbins' book, The High Five Habit. Have mm -hmm. you read that book? I haven't, but a uh, big fan of Mel. Oh, gosh. One of these days, one of these days, I'm going to get her for an hour. I'm going to sit down. I'm just going to talk to her. It would be, I need her longer than that. I need her for like two days. Anyway, but um, <laughs> she is amazing. But her High Five Habit, she talks about that. She's like, every morning... Look yourself in the mirror and high five yourself and say, great job. Yeah. And you're, it, that does things in your brain that makes you, it fires different neurons, right? So mm -hmm. that you're, whether you did a good job or not, your brain believes you did. Well, if your intentions are good, you know, I like to look at my intentions and not the outcomes because every, anything I go into, my intentions are good a meeting, um, a, a conversation, a business, uh, it doesn't matter, a trip. My intentions are to have the best time and to have, uh, you know, have fun, help a lot of people. There's always my intentions. Now, that's not what always occurs because I, don't, I can't control everything outside of me. But if my intentions are good, then I judge myself by that and go, you know, well, I might have made some mistakes or it didn't turn out like I had thought. And then you look at it and go, well, why? And what can I do better? And how can I learn from that? It gives yourself the opportunity to take that little seed of information, that little seed of potential and plant that seed. If you become the victim of the things that happen, 
and you don't look into it and you don't ask those questions, then all of a sudden you've lost that potential. You literally lost that seed that could have grew into a big tree of knowledge. Uh, so, you know, it's a habit you have to get into though. It, it is literally a habit and it becomes who you are over time where you start to look at yourself and go, you know, I'm proud of you. Now, the easiest way to do that is to figure out what you actually want. So the way I do that is I have people do the five pillars. So relationships, business or career, health, faith and finances, and you identify where you are and you identify your vision for each one of those things. And then you have where you are and where you wanna go and then you have a gap. And so if you can do that, then you can say, okay, what are the things that I do right now that move me toward that vision? And what are the things that I do that move me away from that vision? And if you can identify those things, you can start creating awareness around why you're not moving in the direction you want to move. But until you're aware, you'll keep doing the same habits, repeating the same actions, getting the same results, and you'll get more and more frustrated. And that's what we're trying to help people understand is that it's okay. We are so hard on ourselves. It's okay, just become aware. I'm not where I wanna be. I'm moving towards the vision that I have, the result that I want. And as long as I'm moving toward that vision and result and learning from the steps that I take, then that's success. That's what success really is. Yeah, and I think you said that so beautifully. And I think the key word there is aware. You know, one of the, one of the projects that I'm working on right now is to help awaken people's potential. And it all starts with awareness because until you realize that you are not, you're not your feelings, you're not your emotions, you, you get to control those things. And once you take control of those and become aware, then you get to start to guide and, you know, move towards the target that you want to hit each day. So, so in your book, fix your BS, which, I don't know why I feel like a school kid when I say that, <laughs> but it, it empowers people to help change those belief systems to help achieve success. So what are some common belief systems people allow to limit them that they can overcome using the strategies that you share in your book? The most common one that I hear is I'm not good enough. I'm not enough. That I'm not gremlin. enough to, yeah, that, that's the most common one. They, they come to realize that that's the root of it. Um, all these insecurities that come up about money and weight and health and, and your career and business. And, you know, most people don't believe they actually deserve success. They don't believe they deserve abundance. They don't believe that they uh, deserve um, happiness and joy. It's foreign to them to be joyful. And when someone else is, they're like, ooh, what's the wrong with that person? <laughs> it, it's, it's interesting, but that's also the person that is joyous, that is free, that is just exuding with confidence, not arrogance, but confidence, like in the moment, in the flow, present. That person is the person that attracts the most attention. And the reason why they do is because the people that, that I think should be our natural state. People around want to be like that. They just don't know how. And if they don't know how, then they will constantly battle internally until they, you know, either give up, which is what most people do. I call it settling, which is, I think, the, the biggest travesty because that's you lose all excitement. You lose all your vision. You lose all joy in your life. You're just like, well, I guess this is life. I guess this is it. This is it. Um, <laughs> Yeah. And I, I just think that's the biggest travesty. So you'll either settle or you'll go, you know what? I'm, I'm not going to accept this. I'm going to move forward. I'm going to change my thoughts. I'm going to change my beliefs. So there's only four things you can actually control. You control your beliefs, your thoughts, your emotions, and your actions. Now, I'm not saying that you don't get over emotional sometimes, but you should develop the ability to analyze your own emotions and say, why am I feeling this? Why am I feeling fear? Why am I fear, feeling anxiety? Why am I feeling anger, frustration? Or on the opposite end, why am I feeling joy? Why am I feeling happiness? Why am I feeling certainty? Why am I feeling love? What are all these emotions? Why are they here? They're here to tell us. So what I do is I identify, man, I feel really happy, right? I feel like light and free. Why do I feel that way? Ooh, I feel that way because da 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 and therefore, I want to put myself in situations 
and create more environments that match that feeling because that aligns with who I am as a person. I love that. So, and I, I'm glad you brought that up about the biggest fear is the fear of not being good enough because I really think that's all encompassing all those other limiting beliefs that they eventually bubble up to I'm not good enough or I'm not worthy, right? And yep. I recently, and I, I'm, I feel like I'm pretty self-aware. I do a lot of inner work, right? And I recently was struggling with the, I'm not good enough. You know, I'm working on some new courses right now and I'm like, who am I to share this with the world? You mm -hmm. know, and I really had to step on that little gremlin's head and work on, you know, reminding myself why I am good enough. So did you, do you know what that's called? The, the fear yeah. of not being good enough? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it, it's it's one of those things that a lot of people deal with, though. I mean, they, they, they a lot of people are afraid that they, um, they they aren't qualified to teach whatever they're trying to teach. Now, yes. there's two things with that. Number one, they blame it on their history. Well, because I went through that, I'm not qualified. The funny thing is, is that is the reason why you're qualified, like. The, the fact that I went through financial struggles is the reason why I am qualified to teach about financial abundance because I know what it feels like and that doesn't limit, that actually accelerates my ability to teach other people. The importance of credit, personal credit, business credit, looking at what loans to use and why you use them and what not to do and why saving is different than investing and how all that matters because I went through it and I figured it out. And I went from, holy cow, how am I gonna get through the moment to, holy cow, what am I gonna do with all this money? And so that actually justifies and, and creates a reason why you should be able to teach that. But what most people is they go, well, because I was almost bankrupt, I shouldn't teach. I'm like, well, no, that's the reason why you should. That's literally the reason. Um, so, you know, what you're talking about is imposter syndrome, obviously. And imposter syndrome is just simply your own doubts and fears welling up saying, well, who's going to listen to little old me? I can tell you right now, there's a ton of people going through the stuff that you went through that you know how to teach. Put it out there. There's two things that are going to happen. Somebody's going to get information from you and use it and it's going to improve their life or somebody is going to reject the information. Who cares? That's on them. It's not on you. It's on them that they rejected the information that you were putting out there to benefit them from your experience. So I used to get really down about the haters that would, you know, come up with their, their nonsense. But the reason why they were coming up with their nonsense has everything to do with them and nothing to do with me. As long as so I'm honest and I'm transparent and I'm truthful about what I experienced, that's my experience. You can't take that from me and you can't tell me it was wrong. I'm not telling you what to do. What my job is, is to help you become the best person you want to become. That's my job. But most people don't even know what that looks like. They don't even know what, of, they, they are living the idea of what someone else wanted them to be. Oh, my, my parents. My, yes. Yeah. My parents, my siblings, my um, the uh, the my teacher in high school or somebody around me, my grandparents told me you should do this and you believed them and now you're doing it and you hate it and you're stuck there. Well, the who's who's stuck there? You. You're stuck there. So you can yes. also get yourself unstuck from there. But what would my parents think? My Your parents want you to be happy. They, if they say anything to you, it's because they don't understand it and they're scared and they can't see your vision, but they want you to be happy. So, you know, anyway, I, I get those same things all the time. Oh, I can't do that. What about my spouse? What about, what about if I fail or what about, there is no failure if you keep moving, if you keep going forward, there's learning, there's growth, there's potential, but anyway, I could go on a rant, but I just want, I just, I just want people to understand if you can take time to know yourself and believe that you're worthy, then you can start to write down what your vision actually is for your life and move toward it. You know, and I love that you say that because, you know, first of all, I want to go back to the haters. My coach recently gave me a really great analogy that, and I love it, and I, I think about it all the time now. She was like, and everybody, okay, yes, I have a coach. Everybody should have a coach. I don't care if you are a coach, you should have a coach, right? Um, yeah. 
but she was like, Casey, as your flame grows brighter, you will attract more moths. Hmm. And I was like, that is so true. oh, and moths are annoying. And she's like, if they get too annoying, just imagine your big bug zapper up there and just zzz, and just make them go. And and it, you don't have to say anything mean. She's not saying that. It's just like you just erase them from your spirit fear of influence. You erase them from allowing from allowing them to have an impact on who you are and what you're doing. Because truly, like you said, the reason they're coming up against you is because they're too afraid to do a podcast. They would never do a podcast. They're too afraid to stand on stage to share those vulnerable moments. So it's not about you. It's about them. It's about the belief of themselves. And it's also about the, there's two ways to have the biggest building in town. It's to tear your other everybody, everybody else's building down or to build yours up. Most people live in scarcity. We've been told mm. our whole life, there's not enough to go around. There's not enough money. There's not enough food. There's not enough energy. There's not enough. Well, there is enough. There is an abundant amount of everything. And if you tr truly understand that and start to look around and see the abundance of everything that is around you, you start to go, you know, maybe there is enough and maybe your building and my building can both coexist and be as big as we want to make them. Um, because <laughs> there's plenty of coaches out there. There's plenty of, of doctors. There's plenty of medical clinics. There's plenty of everything. And we all can sur succeed. It's not like if one succeeds, another one has to fail. It's, it's not a zero game. You know, one doesn't go to zero while the other one goes to 100. They can both be 100. And that's the cool thing. If you can start to understand that and really, truly accept that and believe it, then you find yourself in a different world where you start to think in terms of abundance and opportunity and growth and expansion and resources. You start to find things that you're like, huh, look, I've been twice in my life. I've been to what most people would say the brink of, of financial disaster. I've been to the brink of, are you going to go bankrupt? Um, look at some of the greatest people and minds that have made the biggest difference. Elon Musk said that, man, I was, he goes, he said he was 30 days from going bankrupt mm. and he had Tesla. Okay. He had all these other things, SpaceX, he had PayPal. He was, he was close to going bankrupt. Um, Steve Jobs said, did the same thing, said the same thing. You look at some of the best minds. They, they found the resources. The best resource is to be resourceful. It's to look around and go, what can I do to achieve this vision, this goal, this mission that I know can be achieved if I keep pushing? But most people quit because it gets hard and they go, I didn't expect it to be this hard. I'm going to quit. Well, of course you didn't expect it to be that hard. You don't think about the hard stuff. You only think about the good stuff. So my point with that all is, look, if you're not living your true authentic self, you have to figure out what that is first. Yes. Then once you figure that out, and that only happens through introspection, look inside, that only happens through introspection. And you ask yourself, who am I? What do I love? What does it feel like to be loved? What do I love about me? Once you start figuring that out, then the next step is, okay, now that I know what I want, what things in my life do I need to do to move towards that result? And then you have to make some hard decisions. You know, I really hate this job but it's really scary if I go out on my own or if I do another job or I move. There is this internal voice that is inside you, in your, inside your soul that gives you inklings, these little you know, guidance, this little, hey, I feel like I need to do that. There's a reason why you, said, you feel that way. It's because your, your soul is trying to guide you and direct you in that direction. So listen to that thing. And the only way you listen to it is by being quiet and what, you know, in the Bible, it talks about praying all day, constantly. That's what that is. It's not, you know, bowing your head and praying. It's being in tune with your soul, with your creator, with your nature, and knowing that it's guiding you in the direction that you are meant to gu be guided or meant to go. I call that tending your inner landscape. Whenever I do talks, yeah. I will put up a picture of a really messy backyard and then a really like zen-like backyard. And I'm like, yeah, do you want to go into this yard or do you want to go into this yard? You know, and most people exactly. want the zen, but I want the zen, you know, I want to keep that 
tidied up inside, but you're so right. I mean, it really, until you get to know yourself and what it is that makes you happy, because some people, I was one of those that went into a career because my parents said, you should do this. You're good with numbers. Go be an accountant. Do, yeah. I so far from an accountant. It's not that I can't mm -hmm. do it. It's just, I don't enjoy doing it. I want to talk to people. I want to be in front. I want to be networking and making new friends all the time. And you don't do that as an accountant. Yeah. Well, people ask me all the time, well, how do you figure out what you really want? You look internally, like I said, but then you also take action on things. You experience stuff and then you pay attention. You go, did I like that? What did I, what did I like? What didn't I like? You know, it was it enjoyable. Was it easy for me to do? Like, was it exciting? You know, mm -hmm. was it, a fl did I flow while I was doing it? Really the simplest way that I like to explain it is, um, you know, what are the things that you do that you forget you're doing? Ooh, that's a really good way to explain it. Yeah. You don't have to think about it. You just, you forget you're doing it. You're just yeah. doing it. And before you know it, you're like, God dang, it's been four hours. Um, one of those things for me is hanging out with my wife. I just, I, I just, we, we just, we were doing a puzzle last night and before I knew it, it was like 9.30. I'm like, whoa, hey, it's 9.30, what the heck? We've been doing this thing for like three hours. And it didn't seem like an effort. So if you can figure out what that is, playing music and singing is like that for me. Speaking on stage is like that for me. Being at conferences where I can help a lot of people. Um, being a part of my groups and, and helping people with their issues and what I've learned. And I'm not saying I'm perfect. I, in fact, I'm so imperfect that it makes me perfect to be able to teach people. That's the <laughs> funny part. I have had so many screw ups and so many mistakes that I is so imperfect that it made me the perfect person to be able to teach people because I've been through so much stuff. Um, I literally, I've been through so much stuff, I lost my hair because of it. And I'm not joking. I was I, I was in so much stress at one point that my hair was falling out. So now look at me. Look, I'm beautiful. I'm beautiful, Paul. I'll tell you that. <laughs> you know, I, it's so funny. It just reminded me of something you shared on Instagram recently about you don't have to be perfect to be great, but you do have to be consistent with correct actions. So right. I... I call I, it the three C's. Consistency, correct and constant. So those three things talk about doing the right actions, doing it repetitively, and doing it for a long period of time. I, I love that. I, there's so much more we could talk about, and unfortunately, we're almost out of time. Um, so you talk about doing the things when you don't notice you're doing them. That is podcasting for me. I, you know, I love that I get to have conversations with amazing people like you and get to share your wisdom, get to have you know, curious dialogue back and forth with you because I think that's really what helps me to keep the clutter out of my inner landscape is learning more about all this stuff. But I do want to ask you our three VIP questions. So are you ready? Ready, let's go. Okay. <laughs> so we're going to shift gears here. So if you were chosen to be one of the first colonists on Mars, what three things or people would you take with you? What three things? A first colonist on Mars? Wow! Is are all my um, are all my um, needs taken care of? Food and water and that sort of stuff. I don't know. They didn't oh, define man. the question. Okay. Well, they didn't define the question. Well, I would take things to be able to sustain for sure. Food, water, those type of things. Things that I can maybe plant or colonize. You know, in in my bubble on Mars. Um, I would take some sort of music. I think you have to have music. Um, and then as much as I'd hate to say it, my wife and I would have to, she'd have to come with me. We'd have to be, uh, stuck on Mars together. So I wish um, she would and like if that. I could also bring, yeah. Uh, and if I could also bring my kids along, I, I would do that, but I don't know if they would uh, like that so much. <laughs> well, and plus I think you've reached your max. You might have to choose who's the favorite kid. Uh, well, yeah, we'll, we'll have to bundle them together. <laughs> <laughs> How about we'll bundle them all and say my family. We'll, there you we'll go. Oh, we'll good. That's a good one. That's, that's one thing. One thing is my family, some sort of music and then some, um, you know, things to sustain us. There you go. So what is one thing you do each morning to set your day up for success? Um, sit quietly, focus on, uh, creating a vision for the day. Uh, just, you know, focusing on my, my team, um, success, my, my, my team winning, um, looking at goals for the day and just saying, how can I be on point for everyone around me? So that way everyone wins. Uh, and so I, I just sitting quietly and 
being positive to myself is probably one of my favorite things to do because it was for so long mm. I was the opposite. I was so negative to myself. God, you're screw up so much. You're never, you, you didn't wake up on time. I focused on all the things I didn't do instead of the things that I did do instead of the wins. Now I focus primarily on the wins. I learn from the, the, the mistakes. I, fo I think about them and I, I learn from them, but I focus on, man, what are the things that I did well and how can I do more of that? You know, you just reminded me and you're so right. We do focus on the things that aren't good. And you just reminded me of a conversation I had literally before coming in here. So I'm in the green room and, you know, in the studio, you never know who you're going to meet here. We have some pretty cool people that come through here. And so, and they'll come through the green room and you're like, yeah, I don't have any makeup on. Nice to meet you, you know, but I had met the lady. Do you remember the series Buns of Steel? The workout series? Oh, yeah. Wasn't so, that Jane Fonda or somebody? It wasn't Jane Fonda. It wasn't. Oh, okay. Oh, so okay. she did right. a whole nother thing. But Buns is still, but the lady looked like Jane Fonda. So her name okay. is Lisa Hart, and she's recording up here in the same studio as me. Ooh. So I got to meet her. And so we've gotten to be really good friends. And she came into the um, green room when I was getting ready today, and we were talking about how, you know, things change as you get older, right? And how you deal with that. And she was like, you know what? I just wish people would look in the mirror and quit going, oh, I don't like that. I don't like that. And, and look at the things they do like. And I think that really yeah. speaks to what we've been talking about today. Yeah, man. Just look in the mirror and be like, how freaking awesome. Yeah. You know? it, it, I, don't, I don't know what you believe, but you, you have a creator of some sort. And it, it doesn't matter anybody listening to this. There's, there's, you were created. You, were, you, you came from somewhere and you were created into this physical form. Okay? So we can all agree on that. You're here. We can't you know, argue that you're not here. You're here. Um, and so if you look at that, like, man, think about the possibility of that occurring. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's extra, everything has to line up. So if you believe and think of life as a gift, you look at things differently. If you believe that life is happening for you, you look at things differently than life happening at you or to you Yes. or against you. You know, life is happening for me. And the things that occur in my life are things that, I may not enjoy at times. I may be uncomfortable with, but then again, if I'm asking to be, you know, asking for courage, then I'm going to be faced with situations that make me be courageous. I'm exercising courage. If I want money, I'm going to be put in situations that are going to require me to grow, to be able to have more money. And so that's the way I look at things. So when something doesn't go my way, I don't get mad and you know, freak out, I go, interesting. What am I supposed to learn from this? And how can I use it for my growth? I love that. Okay, my final question. If your life's work was being summarized in a news article, what would the headline be? Mm. The headline would be Dr. Greg Persley and how he found out he mattered. Mm. That is really, I like that. I like that mm -hmm. a lot. I want to share something with you that's really stuck with me since we had our initial conversation so many months ago. Um, but it really stuck with me. And I love one of the things that you said, and you said, the pigeons don't fly with the eagles. Yeah, I learned that actually. I heard that from um, Brad Lee. I think I heard it when he said it one time. And I was like, I really love that. Um, or maybe, maybe, I don't know. I listen to so many things. Maybe it was Bradley. I think Mike Tyson might've said that too. Uh, but anyway, the, look, the pigeons don't fly with the eagles. It's, it's when you start to grow and become a better individual, what I mean by better is not better than other people. I mean, just moving towards your potential as you make the decision to put yourself in the position to move towards your potential, other people will try to pull you down. Those are the pigeons. Those are the people that that aren't striving to become an eagle to fly, you know, with the other eagles. And so I, I appreciate that you say that, um, you know, that stuck with you because my goal is to add value to others and, and say things that I've learned from my experiences or from other people and have them use that. I mean, everything that I've experienced or that I use are things that have come to me from somewhere. 
And so please feel free to reuse that as much as you want because I, I borrow stuff all the time, uh, you know, intentionally or unintentionally, but it's so true. As you grow, your the group of people that you should surround yourself actually should get smaller. Yes. And that is so true. <laughs> a very common mistake is people try to hold on to this and become that and you can't. It's not possible. You have you to let shed. go of this to become that. Yeah. You got to shed. I could sit here and talk to you all day. I'm not even kidding. Unfortunately, I am going to have to let you go. How do people find you? Because I know they're going to want to get in touch with you. Absolutely. Yeah. So you can go to uh, Instagram, Dr. Greg Persley. Uh, you can also go to Fix Your BS, F-I-X-Y-O-U-R-B-S-L-E-Y. 